Oh, you're just you're just doing the recording on your side. Okay, I'll just grab that because when yes. it's done, it's done. I'll... Okay. So anyway, so you are in Denmark. Yeah, I am. I'm a student in Denmark, and I'm doing this um, project where yeah. I speak, uh, where I do a project about the flat Earth co- community and how uh-huh. people like treat you and stuff. Cool. So, yeah, so a little bit about the flat Earth community, but more more focus about how we like interact with each other and how people treat you. Yeah. Nice. What uh, what university? Um, it's my school. It's the uh, tenth grade. I'm sixteen years old. Holy smokes! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just took a little bit older. <laughs> Well, awesome. No, no, it's great. Um, so six to, so ten, what, what's the high school called or what's the school called? Um, it's like, yeah, it's high school called, uh, U-U. the, I, I don't know how to say it in English. No, no, no. But that's what it's called in, in yeah. your country. U-U, yes. <laughs> U-U? Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. Wow. All right. <laughs> like an artist. Uh, school. So we do oh, art. the creative arts type. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but first I just wanted to introduce you to like the people who don't know you. Who's gonna okay. see this interview afterwards? Sure. So um, you're Mark Sargent, and mm-hmm. you have recently been into um, a Netflix doc- documentary. Documentary. Yes, called, called the Behind the Curve. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Behind the Curve. Yeah. It, we call it a little bit the uh, other stuff in Denmark. So. It's confusing over here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like the front, one of the front figure, uh, figures in the, in the flat earth community. In the flat yes. Earth society. Yeah. That's true. Uh, when it comes, when it comes to media, chances are I, you've seen me more than most. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. yeah. And, and the documentary actually helped that a lot. <laughs> so you just when... became a little bit famous afterwards or what? You know, beforehand, I, I, I wasn't recognized on the street, but I didn't realize that at least I don't know what it's like over there, but over here, anyone under the age of 30 has Netflix because it's the it's the cheapest bang for your buck. You get the most value of, for your media dollar. Yeah. And then so after within a couple months after that thing had come out, yeah, I was recognized in really obscure places. I mean, really obscure. I mean, you know. I, cashiers and flight attendants and what? <laughs> construction workers oh yeah oh, yeah i was well yeah it's a it's a weird subject so when people watch it they're like what is going on who's the who's this strange guy and who are these people so yeah it must yeah. have been so strange you know just go for being like this normal guy to being a bit fame or you know Really fame. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, it's also, you know, it's not like it was, uh, it was a major movie or a television show. It was, um, it was about Flat Earth. Yeah. So I'm always a little leery when somebody comes up to me and wants to shake my hand because it's like, okay, do they, do they hate me? But truth is, most, most people don't. You know, they think it's really, really interesting. But I get very little hate at all. But that's great. Yeah, that that's is great. great. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Because I just think that we have to treat each other with respect, no matter what our opinion is. I agree. I'm I'm one of the first, you know. In, in fact, I have a hard time judging people since I got into this, yeah. because you know beforehand I'd be, you know, if there was a conspiracy, I I've got an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of, but after I got into this. I can't judge people based on conspiracies because I mean I start my day with flat Earth, so who am I to? Yeah. So, <laughs> you you believe in the Loch Ness monster? Beforehand, I'd be like, nah, I don't think so. But now I'd be like, yeah, you know what? I got a few hey, minutes. Hey. Tell tell me what you got. Sure. Why why not? I'm not going to be hypocritical. So. But that's also good to just have an open mind, and that's what I'm going to do. Also, I'm like pretty sure that the Earth is round, mm. and I think I'm going to keep that opinion. But you know. I'm not going to judge people who think it's flat. Sure. I just think it's interesting, like the rest of the people you meet. Yep. I hear you. That's uh, why I've made some questions. And one of them is that there are a lot of different types of the flat earth uh, model. And I get like a little bit confused. Which one do you think is like the most legit one of them? The most legit one for me is the, the enclosed world. 
So the the snow globe model. In fact, I'll while I'm talking to you, I'll throw you some slides. Oh, some that's very some various things. I'll throw it in Skype and it shouldn't screw you up too badly. So okay. like this, the, the model that I follow, here's like one of the first things I used in my speech for um, last year, uh, which was my, um, but the 2019 flat earth speech that I did in different countries, which is ever just about every culture in our civilization basically drew the same thing, which was the snow globe. You know, uh, the, we're living in a building uh, with walls and a floor and a ceiling because, you know, back before we had a space program, that's what you perceived. You know, the skies, you know, the stars moved overhead in sort of an arcing pattern and the ground was fixed. And so that's what they drew. And everyone followed this thing. And, and it was what all cultures believed in for the first 4,000 years at least. And people want to say, oh, no, it's Greeks. You know, the Greeks knew it was a globe. I'm going, no, nah. no, no, no. The Greeks, the Greeks thought that it might be a globe, but they even then you didn't know where the continents were. Remember, we didn't even have a Mercator map until about 500 years ago. So that's the one I believe in. I believe that we're in a, a building. With, with walls and a floor and a ceiling and that it's so big that our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960. And because we didn't have the technology. And remember, we didn't even have pressurized cabins and airplanes until the 1930s, 1940s, maybe yeah. even the 1950s. And um, we didn't have jet planes until you know later on. And so until you had the ability to explore all these areas, what did you really know? And when they figured it out in 1960, about the same time that the space programs were founded, that's when they said, yeah, you know what? Let's not tell anyone, which might be one of your questions anyway, which is why wouldn't you tell the public? Yeah, Everybody out one of the like, what? big questions that I heard. Yeah, why, why not tell people? Well, mm -hmm. the biggest reason is because our civilization was already built. Meaning the the infrastructure, everything that is we are founded as a civilization was already done. You know, the science, the pillars of science built everything around us. And people were being taught a certain methodology. And you're basically going to them and saying, you know, basically uh, overturning that. So I'll give you three quick examples. Um, first one, be academic. So every university in every country, think about what would happen. Um, astronomy and astrophysics, they'd have to be shut down immediately forever, never reopen. And then the remaining physical sciences like uh, geology, hydrology, biology, seismology, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anything with anology, that would have to be retooled from the ground up. That's every university. Because it's the, all a lie or what? Well, everything that we know right now is, is, is based on a, the globe. It is, you start with the globe and then you work outwards. And that's just academics. Um, financially, world markets would have to be suspended for months until you figure out exactly what it meant to the paradigm. Um, but the big one would be spirituality more than anything. Think of the, the five major, if you watch the clues at all, um, the five major religious houses of the world, which are um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. They would, you're giving them leverage against science for the first time in five centuries. Between those three things, there's a lot of potential chaos. And this is like, look, we everything's already been built. So it's like, oh, do we really want to tear, you know, potentially tear this down? If there's even a 10% chance that people are going to march through the streets with torches, do you tell people? Nah, no, you don't. Not until you're ready to tell them, but which is why. Keeping the secret, you know, who is, who is paying off people and who is get, getting paid off? Not many people, actually. This isn't one of those things where you necessarily profit off of, of it. You've already made your money. It's what you don't want to lose. So, I mean, the thing that I love about the conspiracy world is they're not quite sure exactly who's at the top. Mm -hmm. Meaning, the, the first rule of power literally is stay hidden. Meaning yeah. it's, 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 you can't, or the, the longer version is never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown because you know, people will overthrow, oh, governments are overthrown, coups happen. Um, but you can't overthrow somebody if you don't know who they are. So Makes it's this sense. weird, it's this weird thing. You can't be the puppet master and be a celebrity at the same time, because once you're a celebrity, they know who you are. If you're the puppet master, you can control things but you're anonymous. Oh, it's really weird. So 
I mean, could you say, I mean, could it be, you know, one of the big groups like the Rothschilds or the Bilderbergers or the Council of Foreign Relations or the Vatican? Oh, my God, it just goes on and on. Or the Masons or the Jewish cabal. I just, this goes on forever. Nobody knows exactly who's at the top. Is the Illuminati at the top? I don't know. I don't think so since they're, you know, they're talked about in movies. Yeah. It's one of those things. Oh, it's the Illuminati. It's like, well, if you're yeah. saying that you're at the top, you're probably not. Um, but those, all those groups really have is uh, a share of the power. You know, you they've already got their power. There's a there's an old quote, and I do love quotes, uh, which is men rarely give up power voluntarily. Meaning, once they have it, they don't want to give it up. It's 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 a very addictive drug. And so that's who's controlling it. At the very top, it's people that, that have bank accounts that where money is meaningless. They own countries. Uh, they own a lot of stuff. They control industry. They control the way our civilization moves. Uh, and it took them a long time to set things up. So if in 1960, they were told, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, it's not that. And they suspected it from the beginning. They were like, yeah, we're not going to tell people this until we can figure out how to use it to our advantage. Yeah. How's that? So you think it's going to come out uh, in in a while? You know that. Oh, like, I do. I, I do. Going to find out the truth. I I do. In fact, I think we've been we've been helped. I've said this in many many interviews, which is, look, if you wanted to shut us down, you could have done it back in 2015. You yeah. could have stunted the algorithms. You could have said, you know, to Google, never ever fill in the Earth is with flat, right? Uh, you could have gone into YouTube and never, ever recommended us to anything. We were being recommended to people constantly, constantly for three years, 2015 to 2018, just nonstop. No matter if you typed in any conspiracy at all into YouTube, Flat Earth was recommended for you. So why why would you do that? If you didn't want Flat Earth to get out, you, you just make sure it's stunted to where it's not coming out. Um, you don't let the documentary happen. You don't let books come out. You do whatever you can. You shut down stuff. You you use censorship if you have to, but you shut it down. And they didn't. In fact, it was the opposite. We were being helped. Uh, not not necessarily where they were. You know, I was getting calls from the Illuminati saying, "Okay, we're going to help <laughs> you do this." But the resistance that we got was token at best. You know, it was just it, the people were just kind of going through the motions. Even when Neil deGrasse Tyson came out on. Um, on a mainstream comedy show here and did this rant against us, it wasn't his best work at all. I mean, he used no graphics, no video, no, no anything. He just came out and talked for seven minutes and most of it was above the audience's head. And he drew a lot of attention to himself, attention that, that came to us. Could so it be, couldn't it be like put the other way also that, you know, there are, are no people that could like, um, if there isn't someone um, who keeps the secret? If no right. one keeps the secret, then there no one to stop you t from from telling it. So I think that you get like a free pass to saying all this. It could also show that no one wants to keep it a secret because no one thinks the Earth is flat at that point. If you understand. Yeah, but at the same time, if you, I, I know where you're going with that. Yeah. But in in this case you the less stunting if it was me if i wanted to keep this thing under wraps i would do it through technology i would do it through social media and make sure it never ever got traction ever i mean come on google is basically owned you know by by powers the government is fully vested in google right and google owns youtube between those two things just those two things and you want to throw in facebook you know, for good measure, you could you can you can reduce the popularity of any topic, any any topic whatsoever. And when it comes to yeah, most people didn't believe in it back in 2015. Here here's the thing. I'll, I'll give you a quick example. Um, when you typed in uh, flat Earth into YouTube back in 2015, it said search results equals 50,000. Right. Yeah. That, you know, Internet 101, you know, search results. And, and it wasn't necessarily videos. It was how many times the topic was referenced in different things. And that number just kept going up exponentially to where I think at the end of uh, 2016, we were at 7 million. And then 2017, we were at 12 or 14 million. And by the middle of 2018, we had crossed, uh, I think we were at 20.9 million. And I say that because the numbers aren't there anymore. In fact, we had just pres the the we were looking the, the only targets above us 
were like uh, Taylor Swift and Katy Perry and people like that. I mean, there were some big targets. And we had just passed Donald Trump, who was at 20.8 million. And I didn't think we were going to catch him for another six months. And we caught him. And I made a video said, Flat Earth catches the president of the United States. Thought it was really great. <laughs> and just a few weeks later, somebody messaged me and they said, hey, by the way, the scoreboard's gone. I go, what are you talking about? I go, is the numbers, have they stunted? Is it, we, are the numbers not what we think they are? And they go, no, man, it's gone. It's not that search results for flat earth equals zero. Search results for all topics simultaneously were removed. So there is, So if you go into YouTube right now, if you type in any topic, you do not see search results anymore. People just completely bypass. We were the only one that was really paying attention to those numbers because for us, it was a scoreboard. It yeah. was like, oh, yeah, we're just we're just crushing it. We're absolutely crushing it. And somebody I know full well what happened. There was some nerd, you know, you, a group of nerds and some, you know, meeting that said, OK, how are we going to stunt this? You know, we're going to like say it's 70 percent of the number. What sort of algorithm are we going to use to take their numbers down? And then somebody probably pipes up, says, why don't we just remove it? Let's just take it away. And then somebody is like, we can do that. It's like, yeah, who's going to complain? Yeah. Right? It's still in all the other search engines, but, but that, so that's, so after that, what my, what I was saying is, yeah, in 2015, not that many people believed in it just because they weren't exposed to it. And, but now the, the numbers are through the freaking charts. I mean, we're all over the place. Um, we've saturated just about every form of media you can think of with the exception of primetime television. Yeah, that's so true. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but what do you think that the importance is if you'd like, if if uh, we all said that we found out the earth was flat, why is it important? Some people is like, you can believe whatever you think because it doesn't matter. But after all the, like the things you explained before, like oh, yeah. after all the chaos and stuff, why does uh, it matter? Why would it be important afterwards? Okay, the, the big reason is, be, and I get that question a lot, at least one yeah. out of 10 people ask me, what, who cares? You yeah, know, I still got to I still got to go to my job in the morning. My spouse doesn't listen to me. My kids hate me. What, what that's not it's not going to change my life in any way shape or form. Yeah. And it's like, oh, no, that's not true because the very foundation of flat earth says that you're not alone. Meaning, remember, if it's a building, if it with walls and a floor and a ceiling, if it was actually constructed, if it was built, then it was built by something, someone. And that, as you know, is the exact opposite of science. Science says you're this little ball that's flying through space in, in impossible directions and you're covered with a little bit of water and smoke and you were created from the Big Bang and your life is an accident. You mean mm. nothing. You have no purpose. In fact, why are you even here? Who cares? Which is interesting because most of this world is not atheist. Nothing necessarily against atheists, but I, I never really know what to do with true atheists because if you're a true atheist, you would live every life like you, you know you were going to die tomorrow. Flat Earth is the exact opposite, meaning if it was built, then it has purpose. Yeah, it so you has purpose in the world. Oh yeah, it, it, it has huge ramifications there, huge. Which is why, like in, I can't speak for Europe, but in the United States, at least half of the members of the flat Earth community are hardcore religious. I mean, yeah, hardcore. I saw statistics and it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why doesn't that make sense though? Because, you know, if if you were looking for a reason to believe in God, mm. flat earth will take you a long, long way. Now, what, what I thought was interesting though was immediately after I started making the clues, people took it and applied it to the Bible. And they said, okay, let's go over the Bible verse by verse and see what it says. And it says that the earth is flat in one of the Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, there's only one verse that even contradicts it even slightly, and that's Isaiah 40, 22, that says, he who sitteth on the circle of the earth. It's like, well, circle isn't a globe. It's not a sphere. It's not a ball. Circle can be a dinner plate. It can be your dining room table. Mm -hmm. Everything else points to some sort of flat enclosed structure. And to me, it makes more sense because it's more efficient. You don't have to... If you want to, if you want to simulate the universe, you can because nobody's going there. So if ninety nine percent of the population believes in the illusion, that's what you do. And and, and people say, well, you're, are you calling God a liar, a deceiver? I'm going, no, I'm saying he's really efficient. And I go, there's no reason. To, in fact, it was something that Carl Sagan, you know, the famous astronomer from years ago, where I'm sorry, physicist, astronomer, where he said, he goes, he goes, you know, 
the universe is kind of a puzzling place because it's so much wasted space. It's mostly empty. So and he, he never could understand that. It's like, yeah, God would be extremely efficient. So, there you go. The one of the things that I thought was that um, we as persons and people in general have like this need to um, feel like we belong and we have this need to feel like we are we are here as a purpose for right. a purpose and I think that's just something who comes with humanity after my opinion so I think that our brains like triggers to say that and that's that's oh yeah Eighty percent of the world's population belongs to one of the the major religious houses. Yeah, exactly. And yes, I th you're absolutely right. I think we are hardwired mm. to believe in something. Uh, we well, heck, let's let's take it even. Um, we it, not just God. Uh, we want to believe in. You, you ever heard the term suspension of disbelief? That no. mean anything to you? It's the reason why you cry at movies. Or get emotional in movies. So why why do you cry at movies? Especially if like you're in the theater, right? I mean, you know full well they're actors. Yeah. You you in fact you've seen them in other movies. In fact, you know it's a production. This studio has made other movies. You're saying to other people. In fact, it's a two dimensional image. Nothing's happening. Nothing on that screen is real. So why are you crying? I don't know. And and I'm not just saying you know men men and women both cry. It's it's because something called suspension of disbelief, which is we, we heck there's people that cry when they read books. Right. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Well, why? That's text. Why? Yeah. <laughs> it's because psychological, it's a psychological phenomenon, which it's, we're hardwired. We want to believe we are invested in the story. It, you know, we, we want to be, we project ourselves into the story. And because we're into the story, our minds, it's like, it becomes more real for us, which yeah. is why you watch some movies and you don't even make it through it. It's like, oh, I'm not buying it. You know, it's it, when they're when they're called plot holes. You know, if there if there's too many inconsistencies in the stories, people aren't invested anymore in it. They're like, uh, uh this movie yeah, isn't doing anything for me. Myself in it, in the, yeah. the situation of the story. So imagine this. Apply that to this world, which is all of a sudden, if something like this rings true to you, especially the uh, the the fact about you not being alone, which you know, we all entertain that thought when we're growing up, and I know you're young. But I mean, when we're growing up, we we all think about that. It's like, you know, where, who am I? What am I doing here? What's this all about? And we think about it off and on, you know, granted, there's a lot of distractions in our life. And flat earth tends to focus that, mm. which is, yeah, it's like, yeah, you know what? You don't have to worry about the big picture. We already solved it for you. You know, you're, you're, you're here. You're in a building. You're in a sound stage. I mean, Shakespeare is the guy that said it. He goes, all the world's a stage. We're just players on it. But I just think that, I don't feel like I'm alone because I have the people on the earth. So I don't have to um, believe in God or believe in something else. But I understand that sometimes I think I believe at something after the after death. But yeah. that's just because I think it's horrible that it's done uh, when you die. Then I'm well, just and, oh, and that's and that's a great way of thinking. No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with that. And and many many people that don't go to church believe in an afterlife. Why not? That's probably hardwired in us as well, which yeah. is we don't we don't like thinking about us being gone and there's nothing else. I mean, it's it's almost incomprehensible to us. But that's you because we have we have only seen like us being here. We have only seen life. We have only we have always been here in yeah. person. So I think like we trick ourselves to thinking that there's something after the dead after. Or or it's part of the plan. It's part of the system. Think about this. Um, there are roughly 8 billion people in the world, and I think about 7 or 6 billion have died so far, right? Mm -hmm. None of them have come back. Let's not get into the religious stories about people, <laughs> you know, religious icons that came back from the dead. No, no person, John Smith, never came back from the dead and started walking the streets. And there's a reason for that, uh, you know, because... Think of this. If and I used to joke about. Sorry, my rides here. The um, the siren. <laughs> the uh, the um. Think about this. The um. Uh, if somebody went to the afterlife, and took a thirty-second video, of it, and brought it back to this world, think of how much chaos, it would cause. 
And because, remember, this world, uh, the, there's an old line from The Matrix, which I love so much, which is human beings tend to define their reality through misery and suffering. It's conflict is almost inescapable in this world. Doesn't matter how beautiful, how talented, how powerful uh, you know you are, you are always mired in conflict, right? Yeah. Which you know, people would rather. There's a lot of people who would rather be somewhere else if there were somewhere else to go. So if there were an afterlife, people would bail on this world in two seconds. You know, even like right now, it's like we can't think of what happens after we die. But mm -hmm. if all of a sudden you saw like a 30 second clip on YouTube, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, here's what the afterlife is like. If it's better than this world and <laughs> you know there's a high degree, you're, you're, you're jumping off bridges. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People will just like, oh, I'm gone. <laughs> they were gone. But That's you put that is. mystery out there and that keeps people from going because, you know, we it's called the uh, the fear of the unknown. You know, or the there's a we I don't know if we were the ones that came up with this quote, and that is the devil you know versus the devil you don't know. Yeah. You know, it's like we'd rather be suffering here than something that could be worse out there. Yeah. So, and it could sorry, be better. We don't know. Yeah. So, and it could be nothing. Could be nothing, could. but I highly doubt it. Yeah, highly, highly doubt it. Because if it if it, if it was, I there's some design features of this world which seem too blatant. And again, it could be nothing. Sure, why not? But if it was nothing, we're not going to know anyway. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it's not you know we 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 can't comprehend nothing. We comprehend hell and heaven and stuff. We can't comprehend nothing. Yeah, you know that it's like hitting pause on something. Technically, when you hit pause on something, nothing's happening. But the person involved in the pause don't know any anyway, so uh, I could go on. <laughs> it so, makes sense. It makes well, yeah, sense. Yeah, where where else do you want to go with this? So, do you think like you have to be religious to uh, be a, a member of the flat Earth community? No, no, I don't. But eh, but there's a caveat what to that, you which is you you can't. I you, you don't have to be religious, but it is really tough to be an atheist. Now we don't require anything, obviously. There's you know, we yeah. don't hand out we don't hand out membership cards uh, <laughs> like like they did in the old days. Um, but you being an atheist would be very very tough to mm. do because again, it, if we are built, you know, if this is a building, then it was built by someone, and if it was built by someone, you can only go one of two ways: either you go the direction of uh, an older, more powerful civilization than our own, or um, some giant, you know, Santa Claus basically in a bathrobe, uh, you know, that's that. And at that point you're splitting hairs because one man's advanced civilization is another man's deity. Come on, let's face it. If a giant golden spaceship landed in, in a town near you, two things would happen. There'd be a group of people saying, oh, wow, they do look like the people from Avatar. And there'd be <laughs> another people that would start building churches immediately for the, you know, for the blue people. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of the things we are. We do. We love we love worship for whatever reason. I mean, come on, we do it with sports people. We do it with entertainers. We we worship all sorts of stuff. We we are hardwired to worship things. Yeah. Okay. Then my next question would be: um, How did it affect your life to be a flat Earth um, Earth? Person? To think that, yeah, to be a flat earth person. And a lot of people like sacrifice their uh, relationship with their families and stuff yeah. because the family um, disown them, kind of. Yeah. Do you think that, can you like understand how the family can disown people who think the earth is flat? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a huge paradigm change. Um, it is difficult for people to, there's two things that happen when you get into flat earth. One is your enthusiasm goes through the roof because all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I have purpose. You know, I'm not alone. I'm, I, it empowers you. But at the same time, you're also so enthusiastic that you want to share it with people. Yeah. The, the problem is there is that you forget very often how long it took you to get there. So if it took you two weeks to get into the whole flat earth mindset, then... And, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, I got it. But once you get it, you forget about those two weeks. It's like, I can convince my family in two hours. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you no, you can't. Why, why would you ever try to do something like that? And that's what they do. In fact, holidays I hate because people, you know, family gatherings, they'll sit down at the table and people say, oh, what's been going on in your life? It's like, well, 
<laughs> I'm, a flat, I'm a flat earther. Yeah. And people look at them like they're on drugs or they just told them that they were gay or I mean, <laughs> it's, it's almost, in fact, as far as the disowning goes, there's a lot of conflict because it's like a religious paradigm change. It's like um, sitting down in the middle of a big Catholic family and saying you're converting to Judaism. Right. It's it's on that sort of level where it's like, what do you mean you're converting? What? Why? Why? You know, and then all of a sudden the questions come out and there's this huge pushback. And so, yeah, yeah. People have gotten divorced. People have left their families. Uh, it is it is rough for some people and it is all instigated by on our side, which is even weirder um, at the same time. And, and, and I'm sure I said in the documentary, whereas there's a lot of people that will will not date anybody but flat earthers now. Because yeah, dating it's, sites also. Oh yeah, yeah. Dating sites. Um, you don't. Well, it's too much of a paradigm change. It's too. It's too big. Too. I mean. I mean. You could try going through the motions, but if they don't come around eventually, it's going to eventually. It's going to fail. It's going to be doomed. And there, there's nothing you can do. I mean, yeah. You, if you, if you're lucky, uh, if the person is special enough and open-minded enough, you know, they'd be. You know, we're we're tolerant of all sorts of things when we grow up and and hang out with other people you know we have people have hobbies it's like uh but it, like like for example if you were a vegan would you date someone who was an active hunter and skinned his own and made his own you know cured his own meat probably not right is there, there... I, I am vegan and my family uh, i have like three persons in my family who are hunters there you go yeah, yeah, it's working fine, but that's not well. Yeah, for your family, sure. But would yeah. you would you you know end up marrying a guy? Well, no offense. I mean, I don't know if guys are <laughs> girls. But would you would you spend you know would you date someone along those lines? Eh, maybe. But that's the sort of paradigm change we're we're talking about here. Um, in in my family, it really varies. You know, it's it's kind of split. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. There's some people that like it that are in the closet. 90% of our community, which also I don't think was talked about in the documentary too much, is in the closet. Yeah, it, you know, they, doesn't, they didn't say anything about that. No, nah, the documentary people hated us. So by the time we got to the end, they just, they thought that this topic was horrible. Mostly because of what was happening here. You yeah. Know, you and I are talking and you're young. And when that 12-year-old boy walked up to the microphone and was asking me questions, the documentary people went bonkers. That yeah. Oh yeah, they're like, "What is happening? Why is that kid here?" And they really thought w that we were adversely affecting the future. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I didn't ask that. I don't know who that kid is. He just came on his own. Like, it's like not my fault. He skipped school. But how, so, how would you like people to treat you? You know, like the documentary. I I didn't. I think it was very interesting because I got like an insight on how it worked and stuff. But I right. didn't think that. Some of the scientists uh, seemed like they were making fun of your opinions, and at, I don't think that's a good way to um, put it. And oh. one of them also said, like, I don't think that you can make fun of people and that would change the minds or something like that. And I was, that's that's why I'm talking to you also because I, yeah. I think that's true. So how would you like people to? Um, oh, I'm just gonna open it. How would you like people to react? And how well, I'd like people to react not like the slide I just sent you. Mm. So the slide I just sent you is Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's one of his most famous quotes, which is, you should believe in... Uh, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. And that's the reason why scientists come at us the way they, they do. Because science puts their stamp of approval on things. And once they do, they say, well, it's, it's right. We know it's right. You know, it's, it's like you shouldn't question it because we are the authority. Yeah. And that's and, and so, yeah, when they look at us and, and say, oh, you know, flat earthers are crazy. And I come up back with different arguments for them. And I say, you know, it's like, so science can't be wrong. And, and here's here's where it gets interesting. I say and they say, well, no, I've, I've talked to scientists and, and they say, no, science can be wrong. I go, really? Give me five instances where science has admitted straight up that they're wrong about anything. They they don't they just absorb they just readjust their uh, their position on the topic. For example, uh, I'll give you a quick one. This was in uh, a speech thing that I did real fast. So the um so that fish I just sent you right. 
Yeah. I don't know if, you, if you've seen it. It's a famous fish. It's called the coelacanth fish. It's been extinct for at least 70 million years. Right? Mm -hmm. Every scientist in the world, every single scientist would have bet everything they owned that this fish was, because that's the fossil record. There it is. It's extinct for 70 million years. Well, that's a problem because then the British found one and then they found another one. And then finally, National Geographic <laughs> did, did uh, a special on, and they're swimming around with them. They're all over Africa. Yeah. So the question is, so science was absolutely positively put in a certificate you can frame wrong about this. Absolutely wrong. Every scientist in the world was wrong. How did they screw up so badly? And the reason is that the biggest flaw of science is that nobody bothers to reinvestigate the previous work of other scientists. They build on top of each other. They just keep building on their own because, oh, the guy below me, he's, he's got to be right, right? Well, you know, he went through peer review process. It's got to be right. But what if it wasn't? What if the guy down at the very bottom, the very foundation was wrong? Then everybody above him is also wrong. So when I get people who come at me and they say, oh, you're, you're smarter than Stephen Hawking and, and Albert Einstein. I go, no, I don't have to be. They're very, very intelligent individuals. They could blow me away in an SAT score. You know, they could, they, they're heavy, heavy math. The yeah. problem is, is that they built their assumptions on just that, assumptions. They never bothered to check to see if it was absolutely right. So let me go back, and I know I'll ramble a little bit, but let me go back to um, a quote that I put in, I don't think it was in the movie, um, from George Orwell, which he said that, and this is 1946, he said, when you go to anyone on the street and you ask them how they know the earth is a globe, they say, we know it's a globe. And then when you push them on it and you say, how do you know for sure, they get angry. Because yeah. remember, that, this was 1946. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. How did everyone in 1946 know it was a globe? They didn't. They were told. That was it. There was, there was no space program in 1946. How did you know? And you say, well, that doesn't prove anything. I'm going, no, it does. Until you get high enough to look at the Earth for yourself, you don't know. And science should know better. So I don't... To, to answer your question, the, the short version of the question, I hope that people, when they look at Flat Earth, are going somewhat open-minded, but I know after five years of doing this that they don't. The knee-jerk reaction is always the same, which is, Flat Earth, <laughs> dumb. <laughs> flat Earth is stupid. And but, but then, again, you have to ask yourself, why do you think it's stupid? And you say, well, because uh, the space program, yeah. right? Yeah, there's all sorts of space footage. It's like, you mean the United States military? Those guys, they'd never lie to you, ever. The United States military never lies to anyone about anything. Nope. Nope, never does. And, and yet... It's so true. It's so true. And the reason that I picked this subject is because one of my friends or one people, a person I know, she is a flat earther. Yeah. And when she uh, told it in school, you know, she basically got bullied. And they were making fun of her all the time. And I was like... Uh, first of all, I wanted to know why she was so outgoing with it, because, you know, it's it's a thing that I would consider as an opinion. But if you if you you would like know that people is not going to agree with you. Yeah. So why why keep on like pushing it? And that how, was how old, how old is she? She is at my age. She's 16. Yeah. What, what's her name? What's her name? Nicolina. Nic Nicolina. Yeah. Yeah, if she's listening, is she going to see this? Uh, yeah, I can show it to her. Yeah, yeah. Nicolina, stay strong and good for you. Uh, again, the the reason why, and you're probably wondering, why doesn't she give up? Why doesn't she just pack it in and say, ah, it's, I, I don't. Because once you get into it, you can't get out of it. Meaning, and it's not because I convinced you that the, that the earth was flat or enclosed. I didn't even persuade you of it. What happens is I tell you, hey, you know what? Do your own research. I don't care. True. I, so I do. I said, do your own research. And once you're going through that, you're the one that tear down, you tear down the globe your, yourself. You're the one that looks at the globe and says, okay, well, this isn't right and this isn't right. And then eventually you're the one that, that you convince yourself. Well, once you've convinced yourself, how can you unconvince yourself? Very tough to do because you were the one that did it. You know, it's like, uh, even if you want, it's kind of like the, the Matrix uh, line, if you remember the movie, which was, even if you could go back, could, you know, why would you? You know, yep, you, you already, 
fins when you know it's false. Yeah, you already got out. It would be meaningless once you got out. So good for her. I mean, and yeah, but yeah, people, there's a peer pressure behind it. But at the same time, we see more, especially with younger uh, people, like the, the U.gov survey, which I love so much. They didn't talk about it in the movie. Um, 18 to 24 year olds in the United States, a full third are with us. A full third. That's huge. 18 and 24. That's the part that scared National Geographic. That's yeah, the part that scared 60, the science. 66 percent or something like that. It yeah. Crazy. Well, yeah. And then when you go below 18 in mm. your range, it's over 50 percent. And that's where. But but here's the catch. It's anonymous. <laughs> so it, like if you did a, a straw poll. In fact, I've, I've, there's videos I could show you. They're wonderful. So I could do a straw poll. If it's anonymous and, and you're not, the people are like, as long as people don't know, oh yeah, we score really high. But if you put people in a classroom and you say, raise your hand if you think the earth is flat, oh no, 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 no. Yeah. Then you're down to single digits. Because that's, then that's, the, that's the interesting part. Like, like people stop saying the opinion if they are going to get judged. Right. But, but do you think it's, because in the movie also they said that, um, and in some things I googled afterwards, they like said that it was a bit dangerous for people to start thinking that way. Do you yeah. think uh, that uh, it could be dangerous in any way to think the Earth is flat? How? How? Think and and, I, and I've I've heard that comment as well. Um, which was oh yeah here by the way here's this was the slide when I actually we actually hit twenty point nine million that I made for it. The um. No, how how could it be? It, flat Earth is different from other conspiracies. It's a message of hope. Uh, meaning uh, all the other conspiracies, you know, it's in whispers. It's like, oh, the government can't be trusted and we should overthrow things and blah, blah, blah. You should have underground meetings. And with ours, it's a very, very positive thing, which is why, by the way, way more women are involved in Flat Earth than just about any other conspiracy. Mm. Because it, women respond to a, a positive, you know, they respond to positive energy. They don't, they look, it's like, oh, I don't want to look at 9-11. That's depressing. You know, I don't want to look at Pearl Harbor. I don't want to look at JFK or every American war. Just about, it's all depressing. There's nothing depressing about Flat Earth. It is, it's, it's a very, very positive thing. I mean, yeah, we, we go after NASA a bit and, and go after some governments. But the overall message is bigger than those things. Remember, this is one of the only conspiracies that we have nothing to do with. We didn't build this place. We, you know, man had nothing to do with the construction of this place. All we did was we kept the secret. In fact, we didn't even know for sure until 50, 60 years ago. So actually 60 years ago now. So, we, you know, that's why it's, 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 how could it hurt anybody? How? Now, I now, now there. First, and then I Googled it because I had the same, the same opinion. I was like, it's, it's at some point just an opinion. Um. Uh, for some people and that's how could it hurt other people and then um, one of the scientists talk about if if we say that the world is round and then people start doubting uh, science and uh, stuff like that yep. then they will be very easily manipulated because they like, stop um, they stop believing in the facts that we have built up mm -hmm. <laughs> facts yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, sci the Institute, you're, you're right. And there has, unfortunately, there has to be a loser in this. Yeah. And yeah. science is worried, absolutely worried, which is why National Geographic called me up almost immediately and said, we need to talk about this. We need to, we need to fly out and, and, and do this, which is why, here, I'll drop some in you, which is why we made the cover of these guys last year, Popular Science. We made the cover of these guys last year. Uh, we made the cover of these guys last year. I thought it was really impressive. Skip, Skeptic magazine, because they don't believe in anything. They they absolutely think that everything is true. And we were just, again, crushing it in all these areas because science is worried. And the reason why they're worried, it's what you just said there. We have created a model to explain the world that is easier than the solar system model. Yeah, Way easier. The solar system model, think about it. Oh my God, uh, on top of the trigonometry and geometry and calculus and quantum mechanics that you need to build a solar system, if it was real. Uh, I mean, no, it's in, you have, we're talking about distances that are so vast, you have to measure things in seconds. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's way more complicated, but that's also one of the beautiful things. I think that's the reason that I believe in that. It's because I don't think that we could live in this world and it could be so beautiful and we could have all this. You know, we could live and have life if if it wouldn't be complicated. I think that. Oh, that's an interesting take. Yeah, interesting yeah, take. We have. Well, but but what? But I'm not saying that it isn't complicated. I'm just saying that it's much much smaller. You can do a lot of beautiful things with twenty something that's twenty thousand miles wide. You don't need you don't need a universe that is just our solar system, which is what a trillion miles from side to side. I'm just ballparking it. You don't need that to create the beauty that we are in right now. The complex life and all the systems involved here. I mean, think of the things that we can build with our technology, with just you know money and engineering. Mm. Think of all the the beautiful stuff that we can do. Um, we're close. I mean, we don't have we're unless we come up with a different power source, we're never going to be able to do the engineering feats that that's happened here. But ninety nine point nine 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 percent of all the people in the world only live in this bubble. And if you want to say it's a globe, that's fine. But either way, it's a very very small structure. So I, while I appreciate that you say, well, you know, the complexity, you know, it has to be complex. Technically, yeah, it's complex, but it's more on a micro level. I mean, come on, the human body is so complex that we still haven't figured out most of the stuff that goes on there. Exactly. Uh, uh, we're still working out genetics. We're still working out uh, a whole bunch of stuff just in earthly physics. Uh, the stuff that, uh, here, let give you another one real quick, which I talked about in the clues, which was geology. You know, the deepest hole ever drilled, right, is only 12 kilometers. Yeah, that's not, that's not much. That's, that's nothing. And, and yet you're showing us a diagram of everything going down uh, something like 7,000 kilometers. It's like, what do you mean? You never even, you've been down 12 kilometers. What are you showing us? And in the fine print, this is a science thing, they say, well, we're taking a guess. We have no idea what's down there. It's like, well, then why don't you say that? Why don't you, why, in fact, why are you showing us diagrams at all? Well, in fact, here's the big one I, I really would love them to do. Show me a globe with just a big question mark in the center of it. They don't like doing that. Science likes to put their stamp on it. It's like, well, here's what we think it is. And then when they're wrong, they, they say, here's now what we think it is, which is, by the way, the fish that that's I showed you. Like, that's the layers that they put on top. You know, the, the layers that they put, I think that you can put extra science and you can do extra science and then um the ground basis can't be wrong but you can still uh, make a lot of great science you know i think you have to have some theories to keep on building up oh, of course you're, you're absolutely right guesswork guesswork is absolutely fine uh, there's yeah. nothing wrong with guesswork because you know we we learn from you know taking shots and and but if it's excuse me if it's not repeatable by the general public you're going to run into problems for example, uh, the boiling temperature of water at sea level. Easy enough to do, right? You, you know, get a kettle, some water, put a temperature thing in it, turn up that flame, and you can measure it yourself. Any, any of that stuff. But then you've got people that are doing entire PhD programs on dark matter. Dark matter is a theory. It's an absolute theory, and, and, and we've been working on this for decades, and they're pretty sure they don't they have, they have no idea. No. What, what, That's what dark what dark matter is uh and that's just one thing the other thing uh, uh which they also don't talk about in the movie as much which is gravity your best physicists will tell you I mean, they're, they're not shy about saying it that's like oh yeah you know you ask them what gravity is they say we have no idea what gravity is we can tell you what it does we can't tell you what it is because we can't replicate it in a lab we can only it's like you drop something yeah it falls you drop something it falls well it's gravity what is it I don't know, but things fall. So right. we put a name to it. So, and because people will say, you know, it's a common misconception. They say that flat earthers don't believe in gravity. And it's like, no, I believe in gravity. I mean, for me, gravity is not much different than what you say gravity is in a globe. You say, what's, what's gravity in a globe? Uh, it's a magical molecular force that pulls things down to the center of the earth. Mm. What is in flat earth? Well, it's a magical molecular force that pulls things straight down. Not really that much different. But it's then you believe that it's pulling things down because it's magical, but not not like you know not not based not based on no no. If you want to base it on density, fine. I'll say it's density. Mm. You know, if you if you think it's the mass density of whatever matter you're talking about that's clumped together, that's fine too. We but I don't think it's the it's it's the only thing. In fact, that's one of my arguments to you. 
or debate points, which is gravity versus the vacuum of space. Mm. It is it is literally, again, one of the things that wasn't talked about in the movie, which is, okay, so you take a straw and you suck it out of a glass, suck soda out of a glass, right? Why didn't the soda stay in the glass? Because you sucked it out. Because you used a vacuum force to suck it out. So gravity isn't that strong. And if you took, is there, if there, you took, there was a second floor to your room right now, right? Say this, uh, upstairs. You turn that into a vacuum chamber. You had a valve. And you pop it. What happens? You know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be violent. It's going to be interesting, you know, instant. And it's going to equalize yeah. right then and there. And so, and it's one of the laws. It's not a guideline. It's not a rule. It's a law of thermodynamics. Pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier. Mm. So when you when you blow up a balloon, you let it go every single time. It's going to fly off. Why? Because the pressure is going to equalize. So when you go outside, why is the the air still with us? Why is didn't it get sucked off to space? And you again, you're going to say, you're going to say, well, gravity. And I go, well, you mean the same gravity that couldn't even keep the air in your room instead of going upstairs? That gravity? The same same gravity? Scientists will not answer these things. They they will not do it. They they I say, where is the bleeding age? Where does our atmosphere end and space begin? They they just like, well, we six hundred miles, give or take, or five hundred miles or seven hundred miles. Yeah. It's like well, what, what, you know, what happens there? What happens at 600 miles? Is mm. it just a few molecules? And then, because it can't just bleed off like that. If it's bleeding off, then it's going to bleed off constantly. That's what happens. And they said, well, there's no other alternative. That's where science gets stuck. They say yeah. it has to be gravity because we're still breathing. And I say, well, unless it's an enclosed system, unless you're in a building, it's a pressurized system and the air can't go anywhere because it hits a ceiling. And they say, well, that's not it. Can't be it. But they're also that... Um, I've like seen some, some because when I when I started this, yeah. I like thought about how can I like in person because I know it's very important for flat Earth like to prove to do experiments that you can do in person. Sure. So I wanted to like think about experiments that I could do in person to show that the Earth is round. Okay. And then I thought about you know the moon. The moon is always you can always see the same. Um, pattern the on the moon. Same face of the moon, which is, yeah. by the way, a um, phenomena which science just says it's a complete coincidence. Don't you think that's a little strange that we can only see exactly the same? It's completely locked in to the rotation of the Earth. It doesn't even change a quarter of a degree in hundreds of years. No one, no one talks about that. Instead of it just being a projection up there that got stuck, I don't know why. Or maybe it was a hint. And didn't you think that was a little bit of a coincidence? Or that the moon fits perfectly in front of the sun? That even though the sun is 400 times farther away, it's also 400 times larger? Or the moon's 400 times smaller, depending on which way you look at it? And it fits perfectly in front of it? Coincidence? You know, rather than it being, I don't know, the same size? And then just kind of spinning above us? Here's one. If you're on the moon, here, let's do this. I'll, I'll throw a couple things at you real fast. Yes. We can do this. We can do this in Skype. I'm doing more of this later. So this is uh, an Apollo 12 photo, right? Just a random Apollo 12 image from the Americans. Cool. I use this in some of my speeches as talking points, which is how many, I can see at least, I don't know, half a dozen things that are wrong with this photo. There can't be anything wrong with the photo. It's a real photo. So it can't be anything wrong with it. The there are some. Moving. The what? The flag is moving. Well, eh, don't worry about the flag. I, I, I'm not even going to look at the flag. Um, let's look at the stuff. Here's, here's the reason why this photo gets away with it. You know, this was published in magazines. Why this photo gets away with it and people don't question it. The reason is because the average person, including me, you know, when you go through school, you don't remember anything about physics or engineering or chemistry or anything. Um, you have one light source, the sun. The shadows should be going in one, what? One direction. One light source. One direction. Why are the shadows going in four directions? This isn't a time lapse. Why are they going? It's because the light source is really, really close. The sun, well, the sun can't be close. The, the sun is, is millions and millions of miles away. No, that's a light source, and it's maybe 50 yards away. That's why those things are going in a certain direction. Uh, how'd that thing land without creating a blast crater? That giant nozzle below the thing should be generating 10,000 pounds of thrust, and that's ash. Supposedly, that's powder. It might as well be baking flour. And there isn't anything displaced whatsoever. There is no splay pattern. 
it's like it was just set there. Mm. Uh, engineering that dish that you're looking at, that little satellite dish. Remember, this isn't 2020. This is 1969, a long time before you, right? 1969, we didn't have crap for electronics. That thing, we we looked up the specs, right? This is battery powered, had maybe a range, maybe a range of 50 miles on a good day. And that's Morse code. And supposedly it was doing two-way transmissions, 10 frames of video per second, flawless, no static, absolutely pinpoint accuracy. How are you even lining this up with the earth? How are you communicating to the earth with this thing? 250,000 miles away through the Van Allen belts? No, no, not a chance. No, no, no. And of course the, the stars, the, the one thing I, which I love, which is okay. The star constellations are going to be too tough to, to put in there accurately because remember the constellations are a giant clock system and there's no stars. There's no stars in any photograph, thousands of pictures taken, never any stars and say, well, it's an exposure setting. They can't, you can't see the stars with the exposure setting. It's like, uh, you, you mean you couldn't see stars at all ever you couldn't adjust the camera you didn't take one roll of film that shows the stars <sighs> so, <laughs> and again we got away with it because people don't understand with the spacesuit which i love so much the spacesuit is is soft it's a flexible material in a vacuum it would would turn into it would go completely rigid it would be so tight and then the guys would just fall over it would burst and they would die Nope. Move your elbows, move your knees, jump around. Everything's fine. Your gloves, you can you can build that little satellite dish. You you shouldn't be able to build anything with, with the pressure that's outside. Remember, there's no atmosphere. Mm. So, and you've got pressure inside that suit. It, it's, it's staggering. So, no. No, 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 no. Um, yep. Other things. Now, to you, though. Um, in fact, I can send you a link to the video. We'll see. If, maybe you can watch it while we're, you're with me or not. Let's find out really fast. Um, there's a video here. It's only four minutes long, but I kind of want your reaction to it. You, you want something to to watch? Here, let me share it. Want? Oop, oop, oop. Nope, didn't want that. Nope. Cool, Copy. Quick question, also. Yeah. And it's not one in the papers, but you know, it it was very interesting because the in the film. Yeah, made like um, this experiment, you know, uh, the persons, there were like four or five people in the group who made yeah. experience. And then one of the experiments uh, showed that the earth was round. Mm. And was that and, the laser, the laser experiment? Yeah. And the, yeah. the one experiment they did before that also. And I think the one, the, the crazy thing about that was even though the experiment showed what they didn't want it to show, then they did not believe it. They were like, okay, um, but we have to keep on going and that's fine. But you know, so why didn't, we, why didn't we quit? Yeah. Why, why, well, why didn't, too? why didn't, why didn't the entire Flat Earth community, in fact, why didn't a single person leave Flat Earth after that documentary came out? Mm, exactly. The, re the reason, well, one, it was the power of editing. Remember the director hated us. They would, they were absolutely anti Flat Earth at the end. They, we did so many experiments that they wouldn't show. We had so many things that they refused to put on. And the only two things they came after was the ring laser gyroscope, which most people didn't understand anyway, which was good. Ring laser gyroscope. I, I could ask people all the time. It's like, okay, what did it prove? Most people seriously have no idea what it means. I didn't but understand ring, <laughs> Which is, okay, the sky is moving at 15 degrees per hour. Mm. Multiplied by 24 hours, you get 300 seconds, right? So does that prove, so something's moving up there. If you watch a time lapse of the sky, it looks like the sky is moving. Mm. But science says, no, the sky isn't moving, we are moving. Well, that's the big question. What did the gyroscope pick up? Did the, did the gyroscope pick up that the sky was moving or did the gyroscope pick up that the earth was moving? I say it was the sky. Um, the laser experiment at the end, uh, uh, I'll, I'll keep this one short. Jaron did screw up the experiment, but it was also the director that didn't offer any explanation. He wanted he wanted to make sure the movie ended with Jaron failing on the experiment, which was if you shoot a laser off into the distance, eventually, remember, if it's flat, it's going to keep going for a while, you know, unless the beam increases and increases. But remember, it's got to be a perfectly flat surface, which is why you shoot over water if you can, because water always lays flat. Well, 
it, whatever reason, and remember, it was also during the credits, they were showing that there was all a bunch of obstructions, but it didn't matter. The point was that when Jaron initially set up the experiment, he was shooting across land down this dirt road that wasn't flat, and he didn't even know it. The first rule of experiments is you never, if you're going to, you don't publish before you run experiments multiple times. That was the first time Jaron ever did it. So he never even went there during the daytime. So all of a sudden, people kept writing him and saying, you screwed up, you screwed up, how did you screw up so badly? And he, he, go, he goes, oh, maybe I should go back out there. And he goes out back out there during the day. He goes, oh, wow, I didn't have line of sight to begin with. It's like, you brought a film team out there and you didn't bother to, to set this thing up ahead of time? Never go live the first time ever, ever is one of the first rules of, of filmmaking, which is why we don't have live television most of the time. So no, uh, no, it didn't, that didn't bother us at all. As a matter of fact, it made the audience feel safe when they watched it. You don't want to end it necessarily showing that the earth may be flat. All we care about is people do the research on their own. So, but yeah, no, nobody was going to quit the Flyers community because we knew, are you, the, the guys that were like Bob and Jerem, they were pissed off. I was pissed off. I mean, here, I'll give you a, a great example. Here's the power of editing. You ready? I don't know if you saw the movie more than once. You may have missed this. But when I was at the Kennedy Space Center, I was working on a touchscreen thing, right? Up above, right? And when I left, the camera was still focused on us and he zoomed in on this giant green button that was right next to me, right? Well, I hit that button all day long. I mean, that was obvious. I mean, the 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 thing. There's only one control. It was a it was a giant green button. I hit it, and it's not working. So I figured, well, maybe I could. There's a touch screen. Well, no, they didn't have a touch screen. But what they did was they said, well, hey, let's just get rid of the part where Mark hits the green. We'll just remove it entirely. The Mark hits the green button, and then we zoom in on it, and they go, oh, look, Mark missed something obvious. Yeah. And they asked me at the premiere when we premiered this thing in Toronto. They said, hey, was it okay if we took that shot at you? You know, because it was funny and it tracked well with the audience. The audience was like, oh, yeah, it was really interesting. Mark missed something. And I said, yeah, sure, that's fine. But the truth was I absolutely hit the button. Mm. Uh, or, or as a famous actress said here, it's kind of, you know, kind of like reality television. She goes, she goes, she goes, if it's not, if it's, she goes, if it's on TV, it's not real. She goes, the, you, she goes, you have no idea the, the power of editing and what can be done. I've done experiment. I did an experiment with National Geographic where we shot nine miles long. The big one is long distance photography. And I'll have you click on that link here in a second. Long distance photography. And the, the first section was they want to shoot these balloons at nine miles. And they want to raise them up above the curvature of the earth. Mm. Well, the problem was is that when we were on the beach, we could see them nine miles away. And they're saying, well, you can't see them. I go, I mean, we absolutely can see them. We were the ones that spotted them. We're with on the other side with our cameras. Well, you can't see them because the curvature is there. So what do you think National Geographic did? They made sure that balloons were never shown in the segment. They never used any of it. It was their experiment and they removed it entirely. So like it never, ever happened. And that's because they didn't want any doubt to be out there. The science, remember, that's National Geographic. They're science-based. They have a vested interest. Um, I'm not, I don't want to pick on journalism too much here, but objective journalism, objective news is almost impossible nowadays, um, mostly because there are companies that own these news agencies, at least in the United States, and those companies are owned by bigger companies and so on and so on. And so when National Geographic wants to run a story, who, what, what do you think the angle is going to be? When Popular Science ran their story, what do you think the angle was going to be? Uh, and Discovery Channel and anybody else that's science-based. Science as an institution is really, really worried about this. And so here, so there's a video. I don't know if you can, can you see this video at the same time? Uh, can you send this? the link again? I don't know. Um, oh, you can't see it? I tried yeah. to go back. Okay, I'm just a little bit scared that I like. Um, I don't think you'll kill it. Well, you know what? Look, you know what? Don't even click on it. Don't even click on it no, right now. I'll, I'll explain it to you, and then afterwards you can watch it. Yeah. But here's the thing. So the, the biggest proof that we use when we go out there, you want to be con convinced with something. The reason why we have spread so fast is because the big test that we do is here on the ground. It's not in space. Mm -hmm. It is long-distance photography, which is you shoot off into the distance, and... Eventually, that object in the distance is going to go over the curve. It's going to go behind the curve, and you're never going to see it again because it goes over the side of the hill. Yeah. Easy enough, right? Because the curvature of the Earth is 8 inches per mile squared. So 8, eight inches per mile per mile. So if it's 10 miles, it's 10 times 10, which is 100 times 8 inches, which is 800. 
and 50 miles would be 50 times 50 times 8, which would be 1,700 feet. And I didn't do that in my head. I'm not a genius. <laughs> <I know. laughs> right? And so eventually these objects are going to be gone forever, right? Like uh, Parallax's um, a project, you know, the one with the boat who sails down the canal. Is that like it? Oh, no, you froze. Oh, God. I didn't. Oh, I didn't. okay. Am I back? Yeah, I'm I back. You're back. Yeah, uh, it's still recording. You're good. Okay. So, okay. So, in fact, maybe I'll shut off my email while we're doing this so we don't have any more conflicts. So, here's here's the thing when you shoot off into the distance boats can be problematic every once in a while because it's so there's something called atmospheric lensing or fata morgana or refraction or whatever because remember what we're what we're talking through right now this all around us is it's only 99 percent transparent because it's a gas you know it's 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 80 percent nitrogen and 20 percent oxygen i know there's some trace gases but who cares yeah and so but that gets thicker over time so you can only see so far before this thickness it's kind of like looking through um uh water in a sense you like you know if you've ever dived you've seen pictures of divers like when you go even 200 feet down the sun cannot make it through the water right this is just a thinner version of that so when you see a boat off in the distance, potentially, depending on heat and distance and where you are and all this other crap, um, it can act like a lens. And and you you think the boat is being chopped off, but it's not. It's, it's actually being mirrored from the bottom up, and then it's just fading away into nothing. So the, the link I sent you, this is a, a great example because it's oil rigs. You know, in the United States, we have a lot of oil rigs. Yeah. yeah. And so these are off of California. And one's at six miles and one's at nine miles. Well, that's great because they're fixed. You don't have to worry about it. There's water. They'll always be in the same place. And so we've had people that have gone down and shot different oil rigs at, at these distances. And they shot them at only like eight feet off the beach, you know, so they can get a nice, nice shot. And here's what's interesting. So let's say it's nine miles. Nine times nine is 81 times eight inches, which I don't know. It's, it's enough to, to bury part of that oil rig if you're looking over the curvature. That's not the problem. When you watch this, and I've narrated it so you can you can understand this, that's not the interesting part. The interesting part, we didn't figure this out for a while, which is the horizon is behind them. That can't be, because remember, the whole point of the horizon is that it's in front of them. Eventually, the horizon will cut off things. It will cut off part of the oil rigs at six miles, and it'll cut off part of the oil rigs at nine miles. The horizon can't be behind it. It's like taking a piece of paper, right? Mm -hmm. A yeah, regular, okay. I don't think I have a piece of paper in front of me, but you, you put two dots on it, right? And then you bend it, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't see those dots on the other side of that paper, right? No matter what you do, right? Mm -hmm. But what you really can't, and even if you bend the paper up far enough, you might be able to see the dots. You know, I don't care what, what if they're three-dimensional dots or whatever, but no matter what, the horizon can't be behind them. It can't be. The only way that can ever, ever happen is if it is flat cannot happen on any sort of curved surface. And the the scientists are losing their minds off of this one. They're saying, well, it's a it's it's an anomaly. It's not really I go tell me what atmospheric effect can put the horizon behind the objects. Everything beforehand, you want to chop off the oil rigs and say, oh, you know, it's they're being blurred by this. Yeah, fine. Every argument they've had it's, a, it's because the horizon is in front. But it can't be behind no matter what. That is one of the, again, why long distance photography has done so much for us. What really changed the game, and I don't want to drag this out, I don't know how, how long you want to go, but what really dragged this out is, sorry, what really resonated with people mm. was that we invented HD technology. That was the big thing. If you would have gone back, this is before your time, you got back even 20 years ago, the cameras we had were junk, right? By comparison, it was like VHS. You could have a $3,000 VHS camcorder and zoom in on something that's off in the horizon, just this blurry mess. We just didn't have the resolution. Mm -hmm. But HD technology now, you can zoom in and it's very, very clear. We can see things 10 years, you know, for some years now that we couldn't see before. And 
we didn't make any sense to us. It's like, oh, wow, I can see, I can zoom in on that tanker that's way, way gone. I mean, in fact, the tanker's gone, right? You look at it, you're looking off the horizon, there's no boat there. It's gone, right? Yeah. Not anymore. You crank up the zoom, well, now you can see it. Mm. And most people, it doesn't click. It's like, wait, what does that mean? Well, you shouldn't be able to see it. I've had military guys that said the same thing. It's like, look, we target boats at 30 miles, at 40 miles, some at 50 miles with point-to-point -point beam radar lasers, right? And they can't, you know, it's like, we shouldn't be able to target these things. We, but we do. It's like, you know, it's not, we're, we're shooting, we're not shooting mirages. We're not blowing up mirages. They're real boats. So how is that possible? And it just goes on and on and on from there. I mean, I've had, I have a list of subject matter experts, all branches of the military, pilots. Uh, well, in fact, one from your neck of the woods. Um, uh, you, you should look it up if you get a chance. Um, a female pilot uh, flew 737s for KLM. And she was benched. She was taken off of flight duty because she's one of ours, she believes. Right. And and she flew for years. And they said, and she went into the mail of the doctor and, you know, she was messing with him a little bit and said, look, just so you know, I don't think, I don't think we're living on a globe anymore. And he goes, he goes, yeah, you're not flying until you renounce that. Yeah. And she's still not flying as far as, as far as I know. I'll, I'll, um, I'll dig up the link for you while we're talking. Anyway, what other questions well, you got? Lost, she, she lost her job. Uh, she got a desk job. Oh. They, they don't like firing people in KLM, like a lot of companies. Okay, I'm going to look at the questions. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, we have two left. Okay. And one of them is that um, some and a lot of people would say that you are um, afraid or paranoid of things like the government of vaccines and so on. You Wait, know, who said that? Did you hear that? Believe in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hear it from, from the people around me and, and you know, some of the links I've seen in you, on YouTube. Am I, am I paranoid about the government? No, I'm not. Um, am I paranoid about uh, just anything in, in general? No. Uh, I'm a little different, though. Meaning... I believe in the greater good, meaning, and what qualifies as a conspiracy for me is would I, if I was, if I was in their shoes, mm. would I do it? Let, let's face it. Governments make decisions all the time for the people without letting them know what you don't know won't hurt you. If we, if we're making a decision for the greater good, and it benefits you in some way, does the ends justify the means? If how is how we got there, does it, you know, because you wouldn't make that decision. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, when it comes to the government, there's all sorts of stuff that, you know, I look, I look at what they do and then I say, all right, would I, one, would I, does it make sense to me? Do, do I, you know, I try to say, it's like, what are you going for exactly? What are you trying to accomplish? And if that, you know, if that works, then it's like, yeah, of course, that's what they would do. Everything from, um, let's look at some generic conspiracies. 9-11. Uh, yeah. A, a, a great example. Um, what did 9-11 accomplish? Well, it gave the United States a huge presence in the Middle East. What did we need about then? You know, well, we needed the oil. <laughs> Look, the oil is what it's all about anyway. I, I'm still staggered we don't teach this in schools. Maybe that's a different reason. The, the, uh, the entire value of our civilization is based off of oil and how much is left in the ground, period. When we run out of oil, everything goes back to pre, you know, pre-oil and it's, and it's not very fun. So what would you do? To, people don't like I'll give you an example here in the United States mothers don't like sending their their soldiers their sons to fight for things mm. they, but they will send them to if there's a threat a threat to America oh yeah you know it's it's the oldest trick in the book literally one of the oldest tricks in the book which is you've seen this in the schoolyard right you walk up behind somebody you hit them in the back of the head and when they turn around you point at your friend yeah <laughs> It's like, wasn't me, it was it. And what do you think they do? They go straight at your friend. Yeah. Right? And and that's what you do here. Um, you know, you make it look, it was it was very, very effective. 
Mm-hmm. And so would I have done it like that? Well, eh, yeah, why not? I mean, you, you've got to convince the people. You've got to scare them into fighting back, you know, to well, fighting, you, you know, an unjust war. We've done, and look, it's not new for us. America, we do this for a lot of things. There isn't a single war that we've done that wasn't for ulterior motives. True. We, True. we want to be the good guys. You guys know this. We want to be the good guys. A lot of the times we're not. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but we but but you don't want to be the you don't want to you know be it's like ah <laughs> I'm the villain. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So you 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 paint around it. Um, Napoleon was said it best. He said that history is just lies that are agreed upon. Meaning after you do it, whatever you're gonna do, it's like all right, how are we gonna spin this exactly? Yeah. How are we gonna How are we gonna make it? Because you don't want to leave the bad taste in in people's mouths when it comes to the public. Um, I'll, I'll give you two uh, two more examples. Um, one would be a few years ago, maybe five six years ago, we actually tried tried to remove Hiroshima and Nagasaki from our textbooks entirely. That's tried not- to remove them, right? <laughs> that's not quite good. That's not going to work. I mean, there's a lot of Japanese people that live in the States. A lot of them. What do you think they did? Right? And we also tried to remove slavery. <laughs> <laughs> which also tough to do. Um, the uh, uh, um, Black Americans make up 13% of our population. <laughs> yes. And we did slavery for hundreds of years. Hundreds it's of years. It's quite hard to just wipe out. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'll give you I'll give you one that was from um, the a, a book I wrote recently. Um, and uh, it's an exclusive, the one that I, um, I I tell people about, which is the Panama Canal, mm-hmm. it's a conspiracy you've never heard about. And it's like, what Panama Canal is dumb. It's not a conspiracy. It's like, oh, yeah, it is. It absolutely is. Um, when you build giant engineering projects, people people die in construction accidents. Right. You build any building. Somebody's going to fall and and do stuff. Um when you um thinking about this for a second like the hoover dam in the united states a giant dam hoover right. okay well like when you build a big dam right yeah. pe- people die we we built this big dam i think maybe 70 people died in, in the construction of that's quite a bit right generally people died making the panama canal which is basically just a ditch right just a big ditch how many people died better part of 6000 Six thousand people died, and you're thinking, "Wow!" And then, and then you're like, "Wow!" You're, you're all. I see the expression. And I say, "You know what they died of? Malaria and yellow fever." And you're like, "Oh yeah, well, yeah, the- malaria kills people. It's like they're in the jungle. What'd you expect?" I go, and and then I, and you say, "Well, it's not like they knew they were going to die." It's like, "Oh yeah, we knew full well they were going to die. Why? Because we didn't invent the Panama Canal. The French did. The French started it way before we did." And they lost so many people that they gave up. They lost 21,000 men. They they just tons and tons. They were dropping like freaking flies because they didn't know anything about insecticide. They didn't even have – we had to invent mosquito netting, right? The point was is after they left, we look at it. It's like, yeah, maybe we should go in there, right? (laughs) And then there's like – and then the meeting comes. It's like, yeah, but we're going to lose some people. It's like, yeah, what are acceptable losses in this case? I think we were fully prepared to lose up to 10,000 men. And here's where the conspiracy comes in. Conspiracy is, remember, these were civilians. This wasn't military. This is civilians. We were hiring a whole bunch of people. It's like, go to Panama, make some money, go to exotic locations, right? Do you tell those people that you're hiring that they have a one in eight chance of dying? No, you do not. Why? Because you wouldn't go. (laughs) That's why. (laughs) That's where the conspiracy comes in. A conspiracy by definition is when three or more people lie to protect something that's either illegal or potentially unethical. <sighs> However, the caveat to that is, does the end justify the means? Mm. Meaning, was it worth it to lose 6,000 men for the Panama Canal? Can you put a price on human life? Yeah. Yeah, you can. All day long. The, we, America, we it's one of the things we do. We put prices on human lives. Now, can you do it to yourself or family members? No, of course not. Your, your mother would never sell you for a million dollars. However, if you were in the wrong place at the wrong time and you were stuck in some sort of human trafficking thing, you would be way cheaper. So yes, you can put a price in human life. Was the Panama Canal worth it? Yeah, it was. It was strategically, militarily, 
outstanding and it was the most expensive toll road in history and we made billions off of it billions in adjusted dollars so can you do that yes you can can you sacrifice the alamo and take huge chunks of land away from the from mexico yeah you can can you sacrifice a single battleship and take guam puerto rico and the philippines away from spain yeah you can we can do the so we, uh, but it's it's look empire building is what it is and uh, men are just i mean it is it is uh, the most powerful drug for men which is power and expanding the empire mm -hmm. i mean look look in your neck of the woods i mean look how many times sections of land in the middle east were conquered and then reconquered and i mean let's face it uh, not not to dwell because i know you have a few other questions which is look rome fell right the roman empire was massive at one point they ran everything for a thousand years yeah yeah they got they ran it for so long that there was no one even remembered what it was for hundreds of years they didn't even know what it was not to run everything mm. that's how long they were but eventually they fell so look people and and they told their people all sorts of you know they were just arrogant they, they didn't even have to lie to their people it's like no no we're gonna conquer yeah. like the, in, in the streets it's like hey who have you conquered today well we're working on these guys that's that was one that was that was their culture the united states has to lie to colonize we have to lie to spread the empire wow. and uh, so yes there are conspiracies sorry last last part with this yeah for anyone that thinks there are no conspiracies in the world of course you're kidding yourself it's like we all know in business and politics and sports and entertainment and even journalism and science yes there are conspiracies mostly because people want to protect their own interests businesses lie for money politicians they just lie uh sports people they're very competitive and they will ch lie cheat and steal to win entertainers will lie because it's also very very competitive journalists will lie for ratings and science will lie because they want to be right <laughs> because they want to be published because they want to uh they want to advance science science has become this religion in itself it's it's jumped from science to scientism mm. so anyway what else you got okay the last um question i have for you is what would you do if you someday found out that the world is actually actually round and would you tell people say it one more time if you like one day you woke up and you heard some uh, arguments and you did some science that showed that the earth was actually round oh would i tell people oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah sorry i was I, there was text coming in Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, of course I would. Absolutely I would. Um, in fact, I, I, that was how this whole thing started was I was trying to get people to show me. It's like, yeah, prove the globe. Yeah. yeah. I, and that was my challenge back in 2015. I had worked on this for months and months and months and said, all right, I can't prove the globe anymore. Tell me how I went wrong. And that's where I put the, the, the thing out to the internet and said, show me how I went wrong. And nobody has to where now i'm coming up with my own challenges there's two ways you could prove that the earth was for me anyway would go a long way into proving it's a globe one's the obvious which is take any sort of camera 4k camera put it to the side of a capsule point it at the ground turn it on let that rocket leave earth orbit you know and that and let it unedited footage 4k if you can do it and to where, you know, it shrinks down into a ball. And there you go. I mean, there you see the earth, right? Mm. You would have thought we would have had this by now, right? This never happened. That footage has never existed in the history of space travel. A little strange, I think. Uh, also strange that no astronaut has ever done a 360 with his camera on ever in the history of space travel. Even on the moon, I would have thought that would have been one of the first thing you would have do and just spin around in a circle. Nope, never ever happened. That'd be the obvious thing to do. Um, the second one would be the 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 cheaper one would be the 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 spacesuit test, which is loan me a spacesuit from any era because no spacesuit has ever mal malfunctioned and killed anyone in the history of space travel. Also, really weird. Uh, put me in a vacuum chamber and untethered, you know just like the moon people, just that stupid backpack, the miracle backpack, which does not explain what the hell happened. 
mm. know, how it's working and tell me how I don't die. Crank, put me in a vacuum chamber. Tell me how that works. That would you know, you're saying, well, what if you die? Or going, well, that's just it. How could I die if that spacesuit is perfect? The thing is, they no one's ever explained exactly how a spacesuit works. They just put it on and they think, well, it's like a scuba suit. It's like, no, 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 a scuba suit is not a space suit. Because smooth, in fact, it's the exact opposite. Even though all the, the training they do is underwater. Every spacesuit mm -hmm. thing that they ever train on here is in water. It's like, why would you train in water? It's the exact opposite. If the pressure is coming in, why, why would you train in water? It doesn't, well, because well, you're floaty. It's like, yeah, but the physics are all, all wrong. That's not how you would do it. You train in a freaking vacuum chamber. You don't ever see them training in vacuum chambers. Why not? Because you can't explain how the spacesuit works. Here's what I mean. I don't care about the oxygen or nitrogen or heating or cooling. Tell me how, when you have air in your suit, how it doesn't try to get out with such force that you become just rigid. Again, and in fact, it is a great example. Um, you can look this up. This is not hard footage to find. You go to, um, you look up any of the early NASA spacesuit things that they designed in the 1960s. Everyone was metal and plastic and really heavy and clunky. I mean, it looked ridiculous. It looked like a, like a bad sci-fi movie. And they realized, like, oh, man, we can't even get these guys to walk up. A, we, they'll never walk up a ladder. They won't be able to do anything. They're just going to be just, how are we even going to get them out of the, out of the space, spacecraft? And then somebody came up with a brilliant idea. It's like, no, no, I got it. We'll just use a soft suit. Nobody knows anything about physics anyway. They're never going to figure out, kind of like the moon thing. You know, that photo with the, the, the shadows going in wrong directions. Your average person doesn't understand. It's like, no, the shadows have to only go in one direction. It's the sun. It's one direction. It's like it's here on Earth. All the, all the shadows have to go parallel. And it's like, as long as it's on TV, people will believe it. Mm. And that's how it worked. Again, it's there. there's a line from The Truman Show, and which is, um, we believe the world that is presented to us. Yeah. And the same thing goes, and that's not just the world itself, it's every aspect of the world. If it's on television, if it's on the news, it's absolutely real. Because the new, all the news is absolutely real. But we don't truly believe that. But we have to believe it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when all of a sudden, now we'll segue into current events and then we can sign off and you can do whatever you want. Which is, so if you tell everybody... There's a virus that's killing everybody. And yet in all these small towns all over the United States, nobody's dying. And the mortality rate is so unbelievably low that it, it's ridiculous. And so you've got all this pushback. But the news just keeps saying over and over, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. Who do you believe? Right? Do you believe your own senses or do you believe what the TV tells you? The TV. Yeah, you have to. And and I don't blame. Look, I mean, I run into people, you know, friends of mine, people that are wearing masks. I'm going, not not flat earthers. And there isn't a flat earther that will wear a mask, by the way. Uh, and and I, and I like, what are you doing? And here's my argument. And I, I it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you believe in. Go to the contact list on your phone. Is anyone on that contact list dead from this? No. Not you, not me, not nobody. Well, I, know, that's I know people who have family who died. And have family who is sick of the uh, sick in this That's virus. Perfect, but you don't. But you don't have to be on your phone. But you've heard of somebody. Yeah. Got it. And the follow up question would be, again, because this is the caveat to it, which is, were they struck down, or did they already have some sort of a, a condition and then they eventually died? Meaning, were they just perfectly healthy people walking around and then six days later? They were dead, or did they have lung cancer? Did they have diabetes? Did they have heart disease? Did they have all this other stuff? Because in the states, everybody that's going in that's that dies from this has some underlying condition. All of them, and so what are we? And plus, the mortality rate is really, really, really. And and I again, the price on human life, right? If we're gonna we're, we'll hit a hundred thousand people next week, right? Well, yeah, but it took five months to get there. And you killed the entire economy because of this. Literally killed it. Mm. It's, it's, it's dead lost, uh, for the most part. So and, oh, I mean, you wait. What's going to happen the rest of this year? I don't know what's in, in your neck of the woods, but it, the United States is in real trouble. Yeah. So we, it's, it's, it's bad, super bad. So I know it's a little off topic, but I have to bring this up. 
which is, look, we went through Ebola and SARS and West Nile and H1N1 and all this. Nobody cared about any of that, right? We didn't shut down anything. All of a sudden, this is... But the TV kept saying the same thing. Be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. And the other thing, again, inconsistencies, why there's pushback. Five weeks, they said, don't wear masks, don't wear masks, fuck, don't wear masks, don't wear masks, right? And then five weeks later, it's like, oh, wear masks. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? You told us for over a month not to wear them. Why, why should we wear them now? Well, because we're telling you to. To my point, I'll, I'll end it on this. If the news came out literally tomorrow and they said, starting Monday, everyone should wear polka dot masks and give no reason whatsoever for it, I guarantee you on Monday. We would do it. Yeah, there would be pe fabric shops that would be completely sold out of fabric, you know, polka dot fabric and people would be wearing them. And again, I'm waiting to tell, I'd be like, why are you wearing this? It's like, well, because we were told to. Remember mm. what I said, circle back. Wasn't it, it's not that you have a spaceship. You have not seen the earth from space. You were told what the earth looks like from space. And before NASA, remember, if you want to lean on NASA and the space program, that's fine. Yeah. But we, we were taught this for at least five centuries, that it was a globe. How did we, why were we being told this for five centuries when we had no space program? How? And again, it's, it's, I, so I don't feel bad for people to get in this. Look, it's not, it's not that you, 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 it's not that you were tricked. It's your, your parents and their parents going back 20 generations. Mm. Oh no. You back? Oh well, yeah, now it works again. Okay, good. Great. Um, the, uh, the uh, which is okay. Sorry, last thing, which is you are you put a globe in your classroom mm. when you're young, and you just leave it there. You don't have to point at it. You leave it there, and it's there in your peripheral vision for year after year for at least twelve years in the United States. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, it's it's classic reinforcement. Uh, right above, in the corner of our classrooms, I don't know what you have in yours, is the American flag. After 12 years of sitting in the corner of your classroom, there are people that join the military just based on that flag being up there. It's like, oh, that's where I live. That's what I'm proud of being. I'm going to join the military. Well, what's the difference between that and the globe right below it? The globe is like, yeah, that's where I live. I'm willing to defend it. So if somebody says it's not the globe, what do you think the reaction is going to be? It's not, it's not that they're being mean. It's not that they're being malicious. That's the knee-jerk reaction. So, anyway, is there, any, is there anything else I can answer for you? This is actually a bit, um, just something I thought about. I wanted to know. You what? know, with global uh, warming and stuff, yeah. I've seen a lot of memes, and that's not a good, um, it's not a good source. But what do you do if the ice wall, like, melts away? Will all the water just float out and then we would die or what? Um, no, 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 no. Because again, you're in, uh, sorry, let me move your picture over here. Uh, oh no. Because uh, you're building. Oh, it works now. Okay. 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 Sorry about that. Um, People have asked me about the global global warming thing before, which is if you're in a building, then we're talking about a lake. Basically, we're this giant lake inside it. So the water is not going to go anywhere. However, if all the ice melts, could the system possibly get overloaded? Yeah, maybe, maybe. But I do believe in climate change because remember, doesn't the whole term greenhouse gases make more sense if it's an actual greenhouse? Meaning right now, they're saying, oh, you know, the gases are hovering over up at this certain altitude, right? And then it's, 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 be, it's this virtual greenhouse. I go, what if it's an actual greenhouse? What if it's, there's a barrier up there, you know? Because that makes more sense. You know, you have a billion internal combustion engines running constantly on the world at any given time. Uh, what do you think that's going to do to that system? That system's trying to compensate for it. It's creating weird hot spots and cold spots all over the place. Absolutely, I believe in climate change. I do. Um, because I believe it's a, you know, we're in a physical building. Um, but if, if all the ice melted, I think it would try to deal with the excess water, but I don't, you know, again, you know, in the United States, we've know. got, 
the, like all of Florida is at sea level. So, you know, Florida would be inundated by now if, if, if it was completely, but I, but I do think that the system is trying to compensate for it. How's that? Well, thank you. Yeah. I think, I think that's all like kind of, do, do you have any last words or something you want to say? Uh, yeah, yeah. My last words is take whatever I say with a grain of salt. I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. I'm just here to give you a few ideas. Um, do your own research, ask questions and see where it leads you. There's lots of content out there, huge amounts of content uh, from a lot of different creators. Uh, what I recommend to most people, in fact, maybe I'll put the, the shortcut in there, although I think two of those links go to it, which is the, the short list for new people. Mm. which which is a lot of different content from different uh, aspects. And you can, you know, everything from the, the sun to the moon to the tides to whatever you can think of, long distance photography, uh, gravity experiments, all sorts of fun stuff. They're all in there. Uh, take a look. And, you know, some of it may work, some of it won't. But do, the point is, do your own research. Try to convince yourself. How do you know it's a globe? How do you know? And see where it takes you. Because there's a lot of stuff out there that will blow your mind eventually. I will check it out. I will check it out. Cool. And I'll give it a chance. I promise. All right. I promise. Well, That's so cool. And then just thank you so much for doing this interview. I can't yeah. believe you actually answered. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, I, I love doing um, overseas stuff anyway. Uh, and you're not, you're actually not even the youngest person I've talked to. What's um, but it's that's that's awesome. No, I'm I'm glad that you're looking into it, and I uh, hope this goes well with your classroom, and hope you get a good grade for it at the very least. Oh my God, are you kidding? Yeah. You should get you should you should get top marks for this. <laughs> oh, thank you, thanks, man, and thank you so much for helping me. Yeah, I yeah. I hope if, this is gonna like higher my grade a little bit. I hope so. I yeah. really hope so. If and if you if you need any if you need any other resources for anything, uh, let me know. I've I've got it all. Thank you. Thank you okay. so much. That's great. Oh. Okay, but then maybe I'll talk to you in another time, all right? Yeah. Anyway. Hap, hap, happy to do it. Thank you so much. I can't. <laughs> I really appreciate it. All righty. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.